A year ago, the USA trounced Europe in the Moscone Cup. It was 12-1, the most lopsided result in the Cup's history. This year, Europe were burning for revenge in the Ryder Cup of Pool. They started well, staggered, then started to pull away from the opposition. But it's been nerve jangling all the way. That's what makes nine ball so exciting. The question is, can Europe finish the job or will the USA overtake them in the last stride? No doubt who the crowd at York Hall supports. They're almost 100% behind the six European stars who faced the same six Americans that humiliated them 12 months ago. On the fourth and final day, Europe have won three singles, the USA two. Now Europe needs a single win to clinch the cup for only the second time in nine years. Can Steve Davis do it? Can the reigning Whirlpool champion Earl Strickland keep the USA hopes alive? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Moscone Cup, sponsored by Labrooks.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the legends. Firstly, would you please welcome, from the USA, he's the reigning world champion, it's Earl the Pearl Strickland! Now, ladies and gentlemen, representing Team Europe, he is the pride of London, the pride of England, six times world snooker champion, it's Steve Your commentators on what could be the decisive match in the Moscone Cup 2002, Sid Waddell and Jerry Forsyth. Well, if you don't know that song, it's called Vindaloo. It's an English football marching song. Been adapted by these colourful fans in the East End of London. Take out their support for Europe in the shape of Romford Slim. A thoroughbred, six times world snooker champion. Come to the world of pool and has taken all sorts of scalps. Reyes, Takahashi and Suke in the World Championship in three days. To try and get the vital one point for the blue side, the Europeans, to take the Moscone Cup, but he is up against a man for whom there is only one word, Jerry Forsyth, and that's genius. Absolutely. Europe, win the lag. Both these men, crowd favorites, as you've already mentioned, the resume of the great right, snooker player, five, Mr. Europe Davis, Earl Strickland, our current world champion at nine ball. The game which is afoot tonight. Settle down now, please. In charge, Nigel Reese from Cardiff, former Welsh eight ball international. But the name of the game is nine ball. You whack the pack, not too hard, it's not taking the heavy break this. And you hope that something goes down. You hope the white stays in the middle. And you hope you've got a shot on the one. Well, the eight ball went into the corner pocket. The one ball wound up in the center of the table and the cue ball is sitting down on the head rail. This is gonna be a tough opening. Strickland has not been in the best of health this week. He has kidney problems, kidney stones. We got he's having surgery when he goes back to the States. Uh, he looked as sick, a sick thoroughbred earlier in this tournament. But in his last couple of outings in the singles, he 
He is look the thoroughbred. He is the world champion. Davis, a mighty task. And you could not want a more poignant possible denouement to the Moscone Cup. The world champion trying to save it. Davis trying to win it here in the next 20 minutes, half an hour or so, trying to win it for Europe. Both these men so tough when it gets down to the finals. Two of the greatest competitors this sport has ever seen. Neither one wants to savor the taste of losing. The Americans have to take all the remaining racks. They can't make a single slip near the deciding balls of these matches. Davis has played a very effective safety here. Strickland has to kick that one ball and he has to send it down behind a wall of balls to play a safety. Certainly doesn't want to leave Davis any opening because there are no clusters on this table. No real trouble balls. The two a little close to the six, but that can be navigated with an open shot on the one. Strickland, one of the greatest shot makers the game's ever seen. Some would argue one of like, the greatest nine baller ever. I know people have said that, but Davis's key factor is fantastic control of the white ball. Well, if you're going to vote for the world's greatest nine baller, uh, this guy's got to be at the top of the ballot. Strickland. Sometimes a frenetic, not to say manic genius. Hasn't left it safe, but he's left it tough. Uh, the path for the one ball into the corner pocket, which is the only open pocket, sends the cue ball toward the side. I would think Davis would have to opt for a, another safety here. Davis began his interest in this game in 94 for the Moscone Cup of that winter. Uh, practiced hard, tried to do the very athletic break, as shown by the great Filipinos, Bustamante adapted it to a sort of straight arm jab break. The break we have to see is just about the weakest part of his game, but everything else is top draw. I've seen Rempi and the boys just gasping at some of his spherical science on the beers. Well, Steve really does have a problem here. The safety is not easy at all. He cannot put any bottom English on this one ball, which you would need to drag it between the seven and the two. He has to figure out something. He has to figure out a very creative option. Now he's looking at the one seven combination. That could be a winner or a loser. That, that's a terribly aggressive shot for this point in the match. A lot has been Europe's motto throughout. Enjoy it. Go for broke. He's missed the Four one shot. ball. He's given up ball in hand, hand to Earl Strickland. A great break for Strickland. Worst possible start. Forced to get us. Trying to force that one ball into a cluster. Had to hit it just too thin. Now Earl has the luxury of plotting the path he desires around this table. A lovely pot in practice then for Strickland early doors. And remember. All the remaining rocks have to be ruined by the Americans or else Europe win the Moscone for the second only time. This is really a great opportunity for Earl. He gets to come to the table and get his arm warm, make a few balls, get comfortable. Meanwhile, Davis has to sit and rue his decision, knowing that he's just given away a point. Dead right. Can't see Earl blobbing anywhere along the path here. The reigning world champion. Me and Jerry and Jim White in the commentary team have brought you. He never led Bustamante. Bustamante looked inspired in Cardiff and then when it got to the nitty gritty racks from 15, Earl became world champion. Drawing off the ago. tank, sending the cue ball up table for the orange five ball. He would like to have some angle here and he does. He just needs to bring that cue back to center table for the six. He can choose his pocket for that six ball. They're all over. Well, 
certainly would have liked a little more speed or a little less on that one, Sid. I'm sorry. Ominously collected, cool Strickland. We've seen him in manic phases. Which is time coming here. 96 was his first appearance in the Moscone. Genius of the game. Tobacco farm boy. Started playing when he was 10 for 50 cents. And the rest's legend. Three times world champion. Just the man you'd want here when the Americans need all the remaining chips. Nine ball down for Earl Strickland. Now he's going to be comfortable at the table. And he gets to come up and smack the rack next. It's his break coming up. 12, the number in both captains' minds. 12 points in your lift, Kamaskuni. Europe Sonia. But with the heavy guns, the Yanks can reel out tonight. That one could be as elusive as the Holy Grail. Indeed, that's true. Earl was the captain last year when the Americans gave such a trouncing to the Europeans. With the same team coming back, there was a popular feeling that a similar result could occur this year. Well, surprise, surprise, the Europeans sit just one game away from victory. And as you've said, America needs all the rest of the racks to fall in their favor. But you have to say they have got the talent and the concentration to do it. This fantastic European team spirit where players are playing their natural aggressive game. There's no bad bite, there's no worry about blame. Could yet take the edge. Could do without. Very successful break shot. He puts three balls in the holes. And he has fallen, apparently, on a shot on the two ball. Bit of a whistle from the crowd. He's so taking he's a long stroke, look at this. Order. He's taking a long look at this. He may not have a shot on the two. Boy, that is close. Well, looks as though it's touching. Obviously, if they're touching, he has to shoot away from that three ball. If that three ball even just jiggles, it'll be a foul. And uh, referee Nigel Reese's eyes. When Earl, Earl gets in the stroke position, they're going to be almost nearer than the players. He is. I'm going to chat with Earl at the moment, Earl is. Earl's talking to the official about probably where he's going to be standing when he makes this shot. And he wants to clear up first that it's going to be a clean shot. He's, he's going to tell the official if he shoots it that he's not going to hit the three. The Americans needing all the remaining racks. The Europeans off there. He's shooting that Just way. One. Take a look at the three ball. Did not move. He's banked the two Perla. across the corner. What Ball a shot from Earl Strickland. That was a pearler. Great shot. Cross corner bank shot. Had to make the shot and get some sort of shape on the three. He's left himself apparently only a bank on the three, but he just made a much tougher bank on the two. And every stroke spells more trouble for the Euro team. Good time for the reigning world champion to show his unique thing. There you see why he's world champion. Two Absolutely. tough bank shots. And he's gotten himself in line on the second bank to follow and finish out this rack. Davis in the relaxed but prepared manner of a Buddha. Earl will simply bounce the cue ball off the rail. He wants to get it oh, so a diameter or so off the rail so he has a clean shot at the cue ball. Takes the eight into the side pocket and he'll drag back toward the nine ball to take it in the corner. Trickles it in. A little bit of anger here. Two zip. Ominous for Europe. The sound stroke that Strickland's in. Pearl glittering down here in Bethnal Green, England. Earl Strickland now leads our match two to nothing. And 
Steve Davis has to get into this game. The crowd extolling him. It will be Steve's break. He has the chance to make something happen here. It's a race to 12, so he's a little more comfortable in his position than Earl is in the American camp. We haven't seen the Davis walk yet. That's right. It's quite a phenomenon. Their theme song is the Baby Elephant Walk. The European team, and when Davis puts on the A face and starts walking like things can't be called Dixie to Doc Green, the English Bobby used to, then you know he really means it. Rack three. Need his A plus game against the world champion, racks. though. Another important break shot. Eight ball in the corner, one ball in the side. Will he land on the two? And Will he ever? Slaughter's break. Beautiful break in the circumstances. Romford Slim wants to make things look grim for the Yanks. Only six balls to clear. Sid, this looks like a road map to me. Absolutely, son. <clears throat> You don't need to ring the RAC or the AA with this one. Everything out in the center of the table. You're a captain, Oliver Ortman. Praying, fingers crossed, rabbit's feet in the pockets. Put a genius on the two genii on the table. Davis. We'd love to bring that cue ball back to about where it is now or closer to the left rail. There you have it. Now it'll be a simple two rail trip. Try just ask Back to the six ball. Send the white around the back. The nine. So he's in lovely stroke. He couldn't want it a neater run out than this one. So Earl knows what he's up against. Does have kicks both ways. Does have to control his cue ball speed here, going up and down the table. Pleases the captain. This to nip back to 2-1. Davis sinks the nine. 2-1 now, Earl Strickland enjoying a narrow lead over Steve Davis. And Earl comes to the table next. You'll see that coming up right after this break. Currently, the scoreboard in York Hall reads Europe 11, America 9. Earl Strickland leads in this match 2-1. Here to crush the diamond of balls and try to get a shot. Oh, Ernest. scratches! Davis then, opportunity knocks. World champion, scratches. Dangerous Davis to the table. He's just started the menacing walk that we saw when he flowered in Cardiff at the World Championships. Crowd realized the significance. Of course, if Davis can take this match against the world champion, the Europeans win the Moscone Cup. Sid, that's the third time today that that same side pocket has eaten cue balls. What an opportunity for Davis here. He does have a cluster of balls down here to worry about. The biggest worry, of course, is the seven ball. It being lower than the eight and the eight blocking it from the corner pocket, but the five ball allows him some opportunity to move that eight out of the way. European captain Limbo dancing underneath the bar there. Anxious to get nearer the action. They are living every moment. That not the best position to be in for this ball. The angle much more acute than he needed. This is going to make his position more difficult, Sid. I have no doubt that he'll slice this ball in. 
But the position is pretty dicey. With you there both ways, it's thin as you'd like, as Ralph's pointing out to Ollie the captain. Some pretty white knuckles pressed to some pretty dry lips up there. Davis pulls out the rest with which he is most comfortable. In like a feather. That'll do nicely. Oh, oh well. As you pointed out, position of the orange, very difficult, given the thin contact necessary here. Yeah, this is uh, about the most uncomfortable place he could land on the table. He now has to figure out a safe place to run and hide, something you'd never want to have to do when you've been given ball in hand. Exactly. Europe. These Balls potentially away from the Moscone Cup. Well, he does have the option here of driving the orange ball straight into the rail, back out behind the eight, and hiding the cue ball. I'll show you here. Take the five ball into the rail and back out, and take the cue ball off of the five to hide behind the seven. As I said at the start, he's made some of the great yanks like Jim Rempe gasp at his cue ball control. This one takes the route Jerry suggests. It's gonna echo that. Well, he chose a lot more distance between these balls, but uh, frankly, the five is too close to that rail for comfort for Steve uh, Strickland capable of kicking this ball right into the corner pocket if he chooses. Yep. Exactly what Steve twigged as well. Earl, 2-1 up. The Americans hit all the Romanian racks here. Strickland has the cushion first, aggressive shot. He'll drive right to where his finger is and off to nip the edge of that five ball. Slide rule precision, millimeters and less. He'll hit it with speed to go around the table for position on the six ball. This is a shot I've watched Earl make many, many times. Oh, he came in too early to the cushion. Left a long, long, tough shot for Steve Davis. And the seven ball is still in trouble. But while practicing, I think Steve Davis, more than anybody, knows and respects this man, Strickland, genius of the game. He knew he had to bring his A-plus pool to this one. Bring A-plus! Talk that one, break. Jerry, would you? He's trying to break the seven out, I believe, with that shot. Did not succeed. He's got a shot here on the six, but he's going to have to pull a miracle to get any kind of shape on that seven ball other than a combination of the seven eight. Well, even Jeffrey Archer couldn't work out a plot like this. Who would have thought Strickland and Davis, both legends, would be playing at a racket that could decide the Moscone Cup? Taking a long look, you know, the. He may want to leave position here, Sid, for a carom where he, the cue ball strikes the seven first and then ricochets off and drives the eight ball into the corner pocket. He's setting up to try and take that seven ball into the corner pocket opposite the eight ball. Is he ever? As I say, at Cardiff a couple of years ago, took out Reyes. Took out Takahashi, took out Suki, world champions all in about 72 hours. Fears nobody in world pool. Dangerous Davis at the table, and that's pretty dangerous. Yeah. 
precise shot from Steve Davis. And now he's sitting pretty. Navigated a lot of problems in that rack as he, we've seen him do so many times before. That's right, when it comes to navigation, compared to Davis, Captain Cook couldn't navigate the ferry boat. Genius at work. Yeah. Nine ball secured in the corner pocket. Steve Davis comes charging back. We're tied at two. The crowd absolutely electrified by this match. The world champion. Destined for the American Hall of Fame very soon. Earl of Pearl Strickland knows it all from his days as the road warrior when he played for money. Now there's pride in everything here at stake with this raucous crowd of European supporters going. Lickety spit for Davis. Even the boys on the balcony chanting along like the terrorist terrors. The odds makers will tell you this will be Earl's year to gain entry into the BCA Hall of Fame. But right now, he's three Black five, games Europe away two, two. from letting the Americans live to see another match. Thank you. And Steve Davis is at the table. I have watched nearly every stage of his development since 94, the first Moscone when he worked on the break, so did Jimmy White. He worked on the cue ball control. He didn't want his snooker to be affected, so sometimes he didn't practice this hard. But now, as you're seeing, he fears nobody in the world of pool. Got a great opening shot. A very good possibility of a run out. If you've noticed, the wing ball on the right side of the rack, in this case, the pink four, is now reliably going into that corner pocket. These boys have figured out the speed of this break. His face is sculpted with the tension and the effort. But the style will not be affected one iota. The black glove, the black glove could be an omen. All Earl can do at this point is sit and watch. The three ball is the biggest hurdle that Steve has to conquer. Apparently it does go in the side pocket. We could not tell if it was blocked by the six. Captain looking tense as could be. Well, there's a little problem here. He's straight in on the three. The four ball is way down here on the foot rail. He needs to get down there to it as well as pocket this ball in half of a pocket. He's decided to take the longer shot on the four ball. Very wise decision. Davis is in stroke. Just when Ollie Ortman, the Euro captain, wanted one of his players to be at their scintillating best. SD is filling the order. And Europe take this match and hoist the Moscone Cup. I don't think this song will ever make number one in the hit parade but it will echo around the east end of London tonight if Davis can keep up this form. Well, Davis is really into his style now. His world exists only inside those four rails. Outside the rails, there is no world. <laughs> Concentrating on the ball. You can see how precisely he's moving that cue ball around now. I never thought I'd meet a poetic Texan, but I got one sitting next to me. And if you're... Uh, Fan of pool snooker or billiards. You are obviously having a feast. Davis in the heart of the East End of London. Showing pool skills that could make the Americans talk for many a year. Davis about to put some deep draw in this cue ball. He's going to come straight back down the line of his cue stick for the eight. To adopt the song about the white on a string. Sitting on the table. There you go, son. Shows the attention and excitement of the fantastic Moscone Cup. 
It's the players singing. You can guess the commentators Whoa. singing. Did you see how closely he teamed that side pocket? Oliver Ortman did. Puts a half Nelson on himself with the tension. As Davis strikes this to go ahead. Yeah. More blood from Steve Davis. And he now leads 3-2. He's only two nine balls away from bringing the Moscone Cup home to London. Welcome back. This is Rack 7. Davis and Strickland tied at three racks apiece. If Davis wins, Europe wins. If Strickland wins, the USA stay alive. It's just so cruel that this entire cup could be settled by a race to two. But it makes very good telly. As I'm sure millions of you will admit, me and Jerry for sides from Texas lapping it up. That time the corner ball failed to go, but the three ball went two rails yes! inside. The five Whoa. ball into the corner. Bit of luck in it. Bit of luck, bit of ricochet. But it's a pillar of a layout now. Well, he has to get that last bad shot out of his mind. This one's not sitting in the pocket for him, but it's certainly makeable for Steve. When he comes back down table, he does have to avoid being blocked by the nine from the two. I think he puts mistakes, his rare mistakes, out of his mind as quick as the coyote <laughs> tries to bamboozle the roadrunner. Just put it out of his mind. Easy enough to get back onto the pink from here. Two balls going to go in the corner. The cue ball, he can either check it and send it one rail or let it, let, it let it flow and send it two rails back out to center table. As long as it gets to center table, he's fine. There he goes on the blue two. Just wants to make sure he doesn't run into the eight or the nine. Wants to take that completely out of the equation. Bit of a ball hit. Whoa, that's close. I tell you, this man plots some mighty precise tracks. That's what's met him, a legend of snooker, six times world snooker champion. That was truly risky, though, Sid. If he'd hit that eight ball, he'd have been trapped behind the nine. He'd have been turning the table over. A lifetime earnings uh, at snooker, five and a half million pounds English. Uh, Pretty good yeah. day at the office. <laughs> You're looking at class. And nobody cracks up Strickland more than me. He's a genius. It's a pleasure and a treat, privilege to be commentating on this kind of stuff from two greats. But there's only one great in the driver's seat at the moment. Boy, your arm has to tighten up at this point. This close to the championship. This close to the end of your match. And yet you'd never see it in Steve's demeanor. Well, he's done more bonding than Jim's this week with the lads. He's hung out with them, had the odd beer with them. He's been to the team meetings. He's been a mentor to Vandenberg. But now he's doing a Geronimo leading the boys. Steve Davis, 80% of the way to his goal. He's sitting on the hill. Leads Earl Strickland four games to three. Race to five. Davis needs one. Earl needs two. And Europe needs this match to bring that cup back home. Your call as that got over the airs to the sudden blunder of great heavyweights, great lightweights, great boxing. Rarely an atmosphere could have been generated like this, though. The world champ against Romford Slim. Oh. Nobody's gone home here. All the energy from this crowd flowing into the European corner. Earl oh. takes up 
the challenge takes up the cudgel takes up the cue stick to try and save the Moscone from the American team which he captained last year and beat the Europeans 12-1 talk about a turnabout will he have a shot after the smash four ball in the corner one ball in the side shot to the two ball I can't tell I believe he can see it I don't believe the nine balls in the way I believe he does have a clear path he's not happy with the position of the three ball being on the other end of the table but the really ugly thing on this table is that five ball blocked from the corner by the eight settle down please Europe need one point they could get it if Davis wins the match they could get it if Davis takes this rack Earl has a collision with the seven ball that he did not expect but you know what that gives him the angle if he wants to take the risk he can go down there and knock that five ball out knock the eight ball out of the way good point exactly what he's weighing up now actually the safer decision here would be to come back out to middle table and take a tough cut on that five ball and that's what Earl's going to do so Boy, I did, did he get out there far enough earlier before I put my crystal ball away that this could easily go to 4-4 on the deciding rack how wouldn't that be fun yeah it wouldn't get much more thrilling than that situation Earl just barely had enough clearance there to get by the eight left himself the easiest possible shot on the five considering the position Correct. of the eight. Yeah, yeah. But he hold the coach. Needs to avoid the seven. And yeah. looking good to take us to double hill. That's right. <laughs> Tennessee Williams and William Shakespeare together couldn't have made this plot. The world champion trying to keep it bare. Of the greatest snooker players ever, Steve Davis. Boy, in a week of one thrilling match after another, here we're going to go to Double Hill. Two giants of the game slugging it out over one rack. And the full can win the deciding rack. He's straight back out again against Eminem. Earl yep. takes his seat. He's done his job. Wow. Four to four. Steve Davis and Earl Strickland both need this rack badly. Steve wants to bring the cuff home. Earl wants to keep that baby. And it's Steve's break. Unbelievable tension. Dramatic twist. The Everest of billiard sport tension. They're there in the wings, waiting to run and pounce and press the flesh with Davis. Things go right. They've already got the victory dance resting in their legs. They don't want to have to put it back away for another match. So is there pressure on this guy or what? Oh, man. You can't imagine the pressure Final rack. Steve Davis you have to break. this four, moment. Four. They haven't won this cup in seven years. And he is one game away from bringing it home. Half a dozen or so true and maybe tinged with luck shots could win it seven ball in the corner one ball in the side no shot on the two ball if Davis can get these remaining balls if he can win this match Europe win the Moscone Cup he's got to look at a push here he's got to initiate a safety war with Strickland right an expert, Jerry. I've seen you play. You're good. Where is a push-out option that might give Earl problems? If I were Steve, I'd want to put as much distance 
between the cue ball and the two ball as possible so that speed control becomes as difficult as possible. The further he can put Earl away, the better he'll be. If he can push that cue ball up to the head rail, the end of the table from which he breaks, and by that I mean take that cue ball and send it up to this end of the table, then he creates a lot of distance for Earl. If he can actually nest that ball on that rail, he takes away a lot of Earl's queuing options. What then happens if Earl says, have it back, pal? Well, then Steve's got to be ready to send that two ball to one side of the table, the cue ball to the other side of the table, and hope he gets a block. Well, not only American players grabbing and abandoning, their nearest and dearest grabbing and abandoning. Well, he's weighing up several options. He's looking at push out call the cue over to the cue ball over to the uh, right hand side of the table and if he gets that shot back it could really be a sticky wicket well we've gone around the houses completely in this four days of commentary we had american jargon at the start and now my co commentator is using cricket references are we excited and tense yes i tell you I'm not sure why he's looking over toward that three ball. Well, if he's going to leave it over there, he's got to leave an edge of the two that he can strike if he gets the table back. Well, if people sometimes say if he'd started playing pool when he was five, six, maybe ten years of age instead of snooker, the knowledge would have come. I mean, it's his lack of knowledge of push-out strategy maybe a factor here? Very possibly, and... and of course, he's also taking into account the fact that he's a, he's a very accurate uh, cure of the cue ball. Maybe he thinks he can put it down so that he has just such a tiny hit on the two ball that Earl's going to give it back, and then he can play a safety. But uh, I tell you, he's playing a man who can hit thin cuts as well. Oh, he's playing the world champion. He's playing against a guy who'll be in the Hall of Fame soon. You name it, Earl's got it. Now he's taking a look at the first option that we drew creating a lot of distance. What an important decision this is. The, the most important decision that this man has had to make today is right here. He's going to use two rails to help control the speed of his ball so he can marry that rail. As we said, he's now created a lot of distance between the cue and the two. Europe in the shape of Steve Davis needs clear this table for the Moscone Cup to be held high by Captain Oliver Oatman. The Americans need this rack and all the rest. Look for the two ball and the cue ball to separate themselves and go to opposite sides of the table. This has to be weighted perfectly. He's using as the block as the nine and the orange. It's got to have perfect Wait, that looks <laughs> not perfect. Nice shot, Earl. Now, the blocking balls are much harder to come by here. He's going to have to kick off of that rail to the right side of your screen. He's going to have to kick and hit that two ball and then create some distance. He's going the other way. That's a lot harder... Uh, Shot. I mean, he may be trying to pot this two ball in the corner pocket, but oh, oh, steady pot. Disaster. Point hand. That was a very, very risky shot. I'm surprised that a tactician like Steve would take that big a risk at that point in the game. Me too. He has virtually assured. The American team Settle down, of please. living to see another day. Ball in hand to the world champion. Red three. Next ball. These balls are easy. 11-10. On the cards big time. Well, the queuing is awkward here. 
means he's got to jack the queue up but as you said he's the truest striker of a ball when he has to jack the back of the queue up that you've seen Jerry yeah he really does doesn't have to jack real tight he's or real high he can uh, he can queue fairly comfortably here I tell you who would have thought that this thing would come down this close when the day started when the evening started the USA was so far behind and they've really done a, an admirable job of gutting it up and coming back Earl's come to the wrong side of the table for this shot. Sure has, and he came very near. The scratch. Too near for comfort there. Well, this is really tough. You can see Earl's extremely disappointed with his effort. He says he's choked. <laughs> and uh, uh, the down, effect please. on them, pretty effective as well. They are choked too. Oliver knows how difficult this is for Earl. Will we see Davis back to the table? Wow, what a moment. <laughs> Earl cannot believe the path that he put that cue ball on. He nearly scratched, very, very nearly scratched in that side pocket that's been eating white balls. Here he comes. Just thinking of taking it to the blind pocket. This is one tough shot, Sid. On right word. Earl has he missed, missed it. this shot. Oh my goodness! He feathered it! The Euro team can't believe it! Knocking the Americans! Davis can now step in and win the Moscone Cup! Settle Steve down, please! Davis, Thank you. Three strokes away from the Moscone Cup. This crowd is just going crazy. And just like a French can, -can line of dancers, the Europeans are lining up for a victory dance. The travel for him should be very simple to the nine. He has a huge area he can leave this cue ball in. <laughs> Folks, it's all over. Steve Davis brings the Moscone Cup home to the shores of Europe with the drop of this nine ball. Yes! Cherie Bob Tag! President Bush! Are you watching in the White House? Are you watching on the West Coast and the East Coast? Are you watching in Manila? And Brandon the boys! Seven. The Americans go out because Europe has got the Moscone for the second time. It's been seven long years. The Europeans have waited for this moment. Last year, trounced 12 to 1. This year, they bring the cup home, and the confetti is flowing down on their shoulders. What a feeling this must be. Christmas comes early for the lads in blue in the East End of London. They've sung and they've danced and they've bonded. And this is a victory dance. Tony Cup, home to Europe. Sure is. And who putted the ball against the world champion that did the business? Steve Davis, Rumford Slim, takes Europe to victory. An unbelievable victory. No one expected this when the week began. The Americans were heavily favored. The European underdogs have really shown through this week. Came through in every clutch moment that they needed. They played aggressive pool all week long, and that aggression has paid off tonight. To present the coveted Moscone Cup, on behalf of our sponsors, Labrooks.com, would you please welcome the chairman of Matchroom Sport, Mr. Barry Hearn. to Team USA and now to receive the trophy the captain the machine Oliver 
Oatman!